Welcome to 3AM Stories, where the night reveals secrets, love, and betrayal. Experience tales of relationships, love, cheating, and the unknown. Subscribe and join us for a new story every night. My name is Sophia. Recently, I found myself struggling with something that I never expected to bother me, loneliness. For the most part, my life has been peaceful. I've spent years building a loving home, raising a beautiful daughter, and experiencing all the ups and downs that life has to offer. My daughter, Emma, is the light of my life. She's married now, living with her husband in another city. We've always been close, more like best friends than just mother and daughter. There's an emptiness that has been growing inside me since she left. I've always been proud of how close Emma and I have remained. She's always made time for me, calling me every day to check in and share the details of her life. But as much as I treasure our conversations, it's not the same as having her here with me. The house feels so quiet, and sometimes the silence is overwhelming. I try to fill the days with activities, gardening, reading, going for walks, but nothing seems to chase away the loneliness that lingers in every corner of this house. It's funny how loneliness creeps up on you. It doesn't arrive all at once, like a storm. It's more like a slow drizzle, one that starts almost unnoticed, until you're drenched before you even realize it. That's what it's been like for me, living alone after Emma got married. I thought I'd be fine, thought I'd enjoy the peace and quiet after years of a bustling household. But the silence, it's different when you're truly alone. I've always been a social person, the kind of woman who loves to host dinners and throw parties. I enjoy the company of others, the sound of laughter filling the air, and the warmth of conversation that flows so easily between friends. But as time passed, I noticed that the invitations to social gatherings became fewer and farther between. Friends who used to drop by unannounced now only called once in a while. People became busy with their own lives, their own families, and slowly but surely, my circle grew smaller. Now, most days, it's just me and the house. I wake up in the morning to the sound of birds chirping outside my window, but instead of feeling refreshed, I'm often greeted by a sense of emptiness. I go through the motions, make my coffee, read the newspaper, tend to my plants, but it all feels hollow without someone to share it with. And then there's the evenings. Oh, how I dread the evenings. The sun dips below the horizon, casting long shadows across the floor, and that's when the loneliness hits the hardest. I used to look forward to the evenings, to the time when Emma would come home from school, or later, from work, and we'd spend hours chatting over dinner. Now, the evenings are long and silent, stretching on endlessly with only the television for company. It was during one of those long, lonely evenings that I received the call that changed everything. I was sitting in my favorite chair, staring blankly at the television, when my phone rang. Seeing Emma's name on the screen brought a smile to my face, her calls were the highlight of my day. Hi, Mom. Emma's voice was bright and cheerful, as always. How are you? I'm fine, sweetheart, I replied, trying to keep the weariness out of my voice. How are you and Tom? We're good. Actually, that's why I'm calling. Tom and I were talking, and we realized it's been way too long since we've spent some quality time with you. So, we've decided to come and spend the weekend with you. I was stunned for a moment, my heart skipping a beat. Really? You're coming to visit? Yes. We've already made the plans, so we'll be there Friday evening and stay until Sunday. We can have a girl's night, just like old times, and Tom's really looking forward to seeing you too. What do you think? What did I think? I thought I was the luckiest woman in the world. I hadn't realized just how much I needed this, how much I needed them. The thought of having my daughter and son-in-law here with me, even if only for a weekend, filled me with a warmth I hadn't felt in a long time. I think that sounds wonderful, I said, my voice trembling with emotion. I can't wait to see you both. After we hung up, I sat there for a long time, just letting the joy wash over me. For the first time in weeks, I felt truly alive. There was a lightness in my chest, a sense of anticipation that made me feel like a young girl again. 
I began planning immediately, thinking of all the things we could do together, the meals I would prepare, the places I would take them. The days leading up to their visit flew by in a blur of activity. I spent hours cleaning the house, making sure everything was perfect for their arrival. I went to the market to buy fresh ingredients for our meals, planning a menu full of Emma's favorite dishes. I even bought a few bottles of wine, knowing how much Tom enjoyed a good glass of red in the evening. And then, finally, the day arrived. Friday evening. I could hardly contain my excitement as I waited by the window, watching for their car to pull into the driveway. When I saw their headlights in the distance, my heart leapt in my chest, and I rushed to the door, flinging it open just as they pulled up. Emma was the first to step out, her face breaking into a wide smile as she saw me. Mom, she called, hurrying up the steps to embrace me. Oh, Emma, I said, holding her close. I've missed you so much. I've missed you too, Mom, she whispered, her voice thick with emotion. Tom joined us a moment later, his warm smile lighting up his face. It's good to see you, Sophia, he said, giving me a hug. It's good to see you too, Tom. Welcome home. After Emma and Tom's arrival, our weekend began in the most joyful way possible. We spent the night chatting, laughing, and enjoying each other's company like we hadn't in a long time. The next day, we continued to create new memories. We visited old spots that Emma loved as a child and walked through the park, reminiscing about the past. Everything seemed perfect until the unexpected happened. That evening, when Emma mentioned she was going out to meet some old friends, I felt a mix of emotions. Of course, I wanted her to enjoy herself, but the thought of being alone with Tom felt different this time. There was a tension in the air, something unspoken that lingered between us. Since the moment they arrived. After Emma left, I offered Tom some coffee. We sat in the living room, talking about life, family, and everything in between. He told me about his work, how he and Emma were settling into their new life. It was a conversation like any other, but there was something in his eyes, a softness, a warmth that made me feel, seen. As I handed him the coffee, I suddenly tripped over the edge of the rug. In that split second, Tom caught me, his hands firmly around my waist. Our eyes met, and time seemed to stand still. There was a spark between us, something I hadn't felt in years. It was thrilling, yet terrifying. I quickly composed myself, but the moment left a mark, and I could tell it did the same to him. We sat on the couch, and as the conversation drifted back to my loneliness, something inside me broke. I found myself opening up to Tom, sharing my deepest feelings, the emptiness that had filled my life since Emma left, the silence that haunted me, and the aching loneliness that gnawed at my heart. I hadn't intended to tell him so much, but it all just came pouring out. Tom listened intently, his eyes filled with compassion and understanding. He was quiet for a moment, and then he did something that caught me off guard, he hugged me. It wasn't just a casual hug, it was an embrace full of warmth, comfort, and care. In that moment, I felt a sense of peace I hadn't felt in a long time. The loneliness that had consumed me for so long seemed to fade away, replaced by a feeling of calm in his arms. We held each other for what felt like an eternity, neither of us saying a word. It was as if the world outside had ceased to exist, and it was just the two of us in that moment. When we finally pulled away, there was a sense of something unspoken between us, a connection that neither of us had expected. That connection led us to a place I never thought I'd find myself. We went to the bedroom, and what started as a tender moment quickly escalated into something more. It was a whirlwind of emotions, excitement, passion, and a longing that had been suppressed for far too long. We were lost in each other, and for the first time in years, I felt truly alive. The rest of the weekend was a blur of stolen moments. Every chance we got, we found ourselves drawn to each other, whether it was in the kitchen, the bathroom, or even while Emma was just in the other room. There was a thrill in the secrecy, in the forbidden nature of our encounters. I knew it was wrong, but I couldn't help myself. 
It was like I had been starving for affection, and suddenly I had found a feast. But all good things must come to an end, and the fantasy we had been living in came crashing down on Sunday. It was a small accident, something trivial, but it was enough to snap me back to reality. I was in the kitchen, preparing lunch, when I accidentally burned myself on the stove. The pain was sharp and immediate, but it was the jolt I needed. As Tom rushed over to help, I looked into his eyes and suddenly, the weight of what we had done hit me like a ton of bricks. How could I have let this happen? How could I have allowed myself to become so wrapped up in my own loneliness that I betrayed my daughter? The guilt washed over me in waves, and I realized that this couldn't continue. No matter how much I had enjoyed our time together, it was wrong, wrong to deceive Emma, wrong to let my emotions cloud my judgment, and wrong to allow my loneliness to lead me down this path. I told Tom that we needed to stop, that what we were doing was a mistake. He looked at me with a mix of sorrow and understanding. He too had felt the guilt, but we had both been too caught up in the moment to acknowledge it. He apologized, and I could see the regret in his eyes. He hadn't meant to hurt Emma, and neither had I. But the damage was done, and now we had to live with the consequences. That Sunday evening, when they left, I felt an overwhelming sense of loss, not just because they were leaving, but because I knew things would never be the same again. I had crossed a line, one that couldn't be uncrossed. And though Emma didn't know what had happened, the secret weighed heavily on my heart. In the days that followed, I struggled with the guilt. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror without feeling ashamed. How could I have been so selfish? How could I have let my own desires come before the well-being of my daughter? I had always prided myself on being a good mother, but now I felt like I had failed her in the worst possible way. But life has a way of teaching you lessons, even when you least expect them. Over the weeks that followed, I spent a lot of time reflecting on what had happened. I realized that my loneliness had been the driving force behind my actions, and that in order to move forward, I needed to address that loneliness head-on. I started by reaching out to old friends, reconnecting with people I had lost touch with over the years. I joined a local book club and started volunteering at a community center. Slowly but surely, I began to rebuild my social life. I found comfort in the company of others, and though it didn't completely fill the void, it helped. But more importantly, I started to work on myself. I realized that I had been so focused on Emma and her happiness that I had neglected my own needs. I had put my life on hold for so long, and now it was time to start living for myself again. I took up painting, something I had always wanted to do but never found the time for. I started going for long walks in the morning, enjoying the peace and quiet of the early hours. And I made a promise to myself that I would never let my loneliness drive me to make such a mistake again. As for Tom, we never spoke about what happened that weekend. He and Emma continued to visit from time to time, and though things were a bit awkward at first, we eventually found a way to move past it. But the guilt never truly went away. It lingered in the background, a constant reminder of the mistake I had made. In the end, I learned a valuable lesson, one that I wish I had learned sooner. Loneliness is a powerful emotion, one that can drive you to do things you never thought you were capable of. But it's also a part of life, and it's something that we all have to learn to live with. The key is not to let it control you, not to let it cloud your judgment or lead you down a path you'll regret. I don't know if I'll ever truly forgive myself for what happened that weekend. But I've learned to accept it as a part of my journey, a part of who I am. And I've made peace with the fact that I'm not perfect, that I'm human, and that I'm capable of making mistakes. Life goes on, and so do we. And though the past may haunt us, it doesn't define us. What matters is how we move forward, how we learn from our mistakes, and how we choose to live our lives from this moment on. And for me, that means focusing on the things that truly matter, family, friends, and finding happiness within myself. So here I am, sharing my story with you, 
hoping that it might help someone else who is struggling with loneliness, with guilt, with the mistakes of the past. We all have our demons, our secrets, our regrets. But we also have the power to change, to grow, and to find peace in the midst of it all. And that's what I've done. I've found peace, not just in the world around me, but within myself. And that, I think, is the greatest lesson of all.